segment. Um, of course, we're going to go over the, the BYOI program for our students coming up into year one. Um, we know parents will naturally have a lot of questions. Please do wait till the end and we'll see if we're able to do some form of a question and answer session. If not, we'll ask parents to put their questions into the chat. And then myself and Lewis will come up with some of the answers with regards to that and then share that with the parents um, afterwards. And we can share that with you tomorrow after school. We can actually put a document together and make sure that you have access to that because we know that there will be some common themes amongst all parents. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're just going to start in and actually give a bit of background as to why we as a school have moved towards using the iPad. I'm going to ask Lewis, he's um, one of our digital leads here at the school, uh, and he's going to probably give us just a little bit more overview on the reason why we would go with iPad versus maybe some other products that we have out there in the market. Hi everyone, hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, so a little bit about me, I work here at the school and I look after digital along with Brian. Um, I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator and an Apple Professional Learning Specialist and I've been working with Apple products for over 10 years now. And why? one of the reasons that we choose iPad over its competitors is it provides a consistent approach throughout the primary. So every student will be on an iPad which allows us as teachers to have a consistent approach in the way in which we approach certain lessons or certain facilities that the iPad can do. Uh, the second is the popularity of the iPad. Most students will now have an iPad at home, which is one of the reasons that we thought an iPad is probably the most sensible option to go for. The iPad itself is the uh, most versatile tablet that is available on the market at the time. And it also is proven to have the best longevity and future proof. The technology within the iPad is far more capable than its competitors at the moment. Apple itself has a 25 year history of education. They started off working with education and schools 25 years ago, and they design their technology around education and around students, rather than at some of the competitors that design it around adults. The iPad is actually designed for students themselves. Uh, they're thin, light and durable. Uh, state of the art of technology, as you might have heard, there's more technology in the iPad now than there was in the lunar module that landed on the moon. So it just shows how far we've come and how much technology we can actually have within our hands. It's the most effective technology at monitoring digital engagement, something that we'll come on to later, which is about some of the screen time options that we can have in Apple Classroom to be able to monitor the students' work. Uh, the accessibility features. So the iPad itself has got an accessibility feature which allows students to be able to personalize their iPad for any disabilities or any uses that they might need for their iPad. And obviously the App Store, over 180,000 educational apps and plus and still add in. So it's, it's the safest store to be able to have. So why are we using the iPad in year one? Well, the introduction of the iPad with it's easy to, it's um, the iPad itself, it's the touchscreen and the manipulation and the technology. If we think back to when we were students and we were children, the complexity of actually working a computer was far too advanced for if we were a six or seven year old. But now with the iPad itself and the touchscreen ability, it's the, we can bring computing to the students at this age. The iPad brings the classroom to life as well. Uh, students have access to endless information, but we also, the way in which it's used within the classroom allows learning to come to life using some of the real recent modern technology, such as AR and VR technology to be able to use in the classroom. Students can really get into the lessons. Uh, the communication, as you all might be aware, we use Seesaw and the communication and the uh, collaboration facility that the iPad has is huge. And it allows, especially in today's modern time where we have to remain socially distanced, the, it allows the uh, students to be able to communicate and collaborate so easily with, uh, with their peers and with the teacher. And then also we can use Apple Classroom to be able to support our students' choices and their independent work throughout that. So that's one of the reasons that we use it and we're thinking about bringing the iPad or we are bringing the, the iPad into year one at the moment. I think actually on that point as well, just one of the things that from a parent perspective, 
Um, when we actually, of course, last year in term three, we went to um, remote learning and we asked a number of our parents from foundation stage and uh, key stage one, uh, what were some of the difficulties that they faced during such a tough time when everyone was, of course, at home? And one of the one of the biggest things that we got was the, the amount of support that students needed on the device, which kind of stemmed us within the digital team to think, is there any other way that we can start to support the students' independence when it comes to using these devices? A number of our students, as Lewis has already said, they actually have these devices at home. How can we start to use them to actually support their learning in school, developing their independence so that, and of course, I hope we never have to, if we were to be in a similar situation where students have to go home, that they would be able to actually access that content in a confident manner. Okay, so we mentioned about some of the options that Apple have to be able to make sure that it's used effectively and to monitor how the iPads are actually being used. There are two main ways that we do this with WSO, and we use Apple Classroom, which is a feature that allows us to be able to, as a teacher, to be able to monitor what is actually going on on the iPad. And we have videos that we will be able to post out to you so you can see more about Apple Classroom and how it works. And the second is screen time something that is built into the actual iPad itself to be able to limit screen time in certain features or certain categories or overall, and for you to be able to go home and monitor and have a look at what they've actually been using their iPad for. This is a great opportunity for you guys to be able to look at the iPad, look at the screen time and not make judgments about what the students have been using or your children have been using the iPad for, but inquire about it. Also, oh, I can see that you use photos three times today, can you tell me what you took a photo about? And that will encourage those discussions to be able to have at home. And on top of that, um, Apple Classroom is um, one, of the, one of the questions quite often that I get from parents is, how do I make sure my child absolutely loves the iPad? Once I hand it to them, the first thing they do is they go to YouTube and they know that they're going to watch something on YouTube. How can the teacher make sure that that does not happen? And as Lewis said, that's where Apple Classroom is where we can use that particular tool because should a child during the lesson decide that they're going to watch something on YouTube, it comes up on our, um, it comes up on our screen that that child is no longer on the particular app that we need them to be, should it be the camera. But on top of that, we're actually able to lock children into particular apps. So say we want them to use the photo um, or the camera app, we can actually launch that across the devices in the classroom, locking the children into using that one particular app and therefore limiting them going off task. Um, and, and I think that's such an important tool for us to be using because it makes sure that parents know that whenever the children are using their devices in school, they're doing it in a safe but a controlled manner as well. Okay, so one of the major questions that we get is about how is the iPad going to be used in school? And I totally understand uh, parents' point of view from this point. If the children were to spend every single day of every single lesson staring at a computer. It is totally not like that. And um, this is about the digital pedagogy, something that we discuss with our staff. And the iPad is integrated into the curriculum. We particularly, uh, at WSO, we use a SAMA model, and this stands for substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. And you can read the, uh, you can read the descriptions about what they mean there. But basically what this means is that we use iPads to be able to redefine a lesson. If we take a travel re review, for an example, and I was with students and we were discussing travel review and everyone had just gone on holiday and we're coming back and I said, right, okay, I want us to be able to discuss a travel review. Traditionally, we'd have had to get out a book, an atlas, a map, and be able to look at it. And we just have a two-dimensional map to be able to say, this is where I went. Currently now, with the technology that we have, we can open maps or Google Maps, and we can have a 3D city tour about the, the places which we visit. We can screen record that, and then I can put it onto iMovie, and I could tell you about, oh, we visited here at this point. I really enjoyed this place. And it allows that suddenly, from a travel review where the child would have had to traditionally write a travel review, with a few pictures maybe, if they were lucky about what happened, suddenly they've got a city tour 
3D walkthrough with green screen, with them presenting it and encouraging those communication skills that we try to encourage with the students. Now, this isn't to say that we would remove writing from the curriculum. All of the main key elements of the curriculum, handwriting, reading, reading from books, writing on paper when allowed and COVID free, they still exist in our curriculum. We don't, they, they, these aren't, the iPad isn't used as substitution. We're not removing them. We're using the iPad to enhance the lesson further. And it isn't constant, 100% engagement to the iPad. I'm staring at the iPad. It would be, I'm using it as a reference point. I'm using it as a tool to enhance my learning, to enhance the final product that we are going to gain. I might use it as a tool and then talk to Brian about something, then refer back to it, then share it to the class and then bring it back. It's not 100% staring at a screen. That's the, I just want to make that clear. Definitely. And I think actually with regards to this, I can actually give you a real life example. Um, currently in year two, they've been looking at uh, their topic, which has been where in the world. And the students have been looking, uh, they started here in the UAE. They then went to um, Italy, then on to America and then China. And then finally came, came uh, are now finally finishing off this week. It's Steam Week this week, but next week they're going to be creating their very own travel booklet and it's going to be done on the device but it's going to be about their own home country and i was recently speaking to a family a, a parent from lebanon and they were so passionate about their home country and the fact that their child was going to get the opportunity to put the skills that they had built up over the last eight nine weeks in which they were learning about all these different countries and be able to embed that in into one of their apps on the ipad now that will of course require some planning that will take place on paper and um, that will take discussions with the other children in their class of course following social distancing rules um, and so the whole concept of creating their very own um almost travel booklet for their own for their for their home country is something that of course the students will be very passionate about it's something they want to share with their parents something they want to share with their their teacher and their friends and we can do that through using the ipad but not solely the ipad on its own by also encouraging the use of a number of other mediums as well So one of the things that we always get asked is, how will I use the iPad? How will it be used in uh, year one? And I know coming from the foundation stage where they have had some access to the use of devices, coming up to year one and saying that they need to bring an iPad into school, of course, will naturally cause parents to be a little bit worried because of how will that look? So the big thing we want to first of all say to you is that the iPad in year one, as Lewis has already said, will not be used every single day and it not, will not be used for every single lesson okay there are a number of ways that we can use it so continuing on with our continuous provision that will be extended from fs2 up into year one it could actually be that the ipad is set out and it's where those children will go to their lockers bring the device out and use it for a short period of time focusing on a particular set of skills the other way we can do that is to actually make sure that we have a task it could be as Lewis has alluded to taking a picture, choosing that picture, and then either using their pen or using their or their finger to draw over the top of it to actually modify something that's naturally within their environment. So we're wanting to build upon those skills. Recently, the digital team have actually put together a um, almost a spiraling curriculum. So we're always building upon skills for students, it's in particular with the use of the iPad from the foundation stage all the way up to year seven. So we are looking at the progressioning and the building on skills with regards to the iPad as the children move through each year. And that does begin in the foundation stage where hopefully next year, of course, COVID depending, we'll have access to our blended learning plazas and we can improve the, this, the um, access that the students have to those devices in the foundation stage. But back to year one, we are looking for the students to bring in their iPads so that they can use them in these instances because it's going to benefit and improve um, areas of their curriculum. And finally, of course, one of the things that I get asked over and over again is where will the iPads be kept? The students are able to look after those devices. We've had students bringing them in 
all of this academic year. They use the lockers as a place to where they will store them. And that at the teacher's discretion, they will then go and bring the iPads out when it's the time to use them. The students are reminded at the end of the day to make sure that they take them home. And if they are not, then the teacher, of course, would be notified. And then they would, the teacher would bring that to a secure location and it would be returned in the morning. So something that we look after as well is to ensure that all of our staff have digital training. And we do this through our staff development program and integrate it into the curriculum. Currently, 50% of our teachers at WSO are certified Apple teachers, and we expect to be able to progress that towards 80% by the end of the next academic year. An Apple teacher program is a program that is designed by Apple to be able to help teachers in understanding how to facilitate using a iPad within the lesson in a constructive manner that we've been speaking about, where it's not just used as substitution, but it redefines the lesson and allows those creative spark lessons to be able to go ahead. Um, so we have the Apple teacher development route. Uh, the digital WSO team is going to be comprised of specialists within robotics, coding, the drone academy, uh, educational gamification, 3D imaging and printing. And all of these programs can be used by using the iPad. So your children will have access to all of these programs throughout the entire, thanks, sorry. sorry. Uh, so your children will have access throughout their journey through WSO at primary. They will have access to all of these elements of digital, uh, digital technology within education. And all of these will be using the iPad. So as part of our teacher development and the review cycles for development, we look at how digital integration is going ahead. And this allows us to inform one of your concerns is how much time does the, my child spend on the iPad? And so what we do is to ensure we look at the teacher development cycles and the review weeks, and then we judge from there about how much time and how much screen time students are actually using and whether the iPad is actually being used to enhance the learning. We also do this through monitoring planning. Um, uh, both of us check through planning documents to be able to monitor how much digital is actually through the planning of the week and whether it's sufficient and how it's actually being used to that as well. Okay, so one of the things that we always get asked because now we've kind of covered how we will be using the iPads within the lessons. So which iPad would we ask parents to potentially look towards um, getting? So we've got some of our suggestions there on the left hand side, but ultimately what we know parents want and historically we've been bringing bring your own iPad into the school now for the last three years and we've actually been developing that more and more each year that we bring it in. The big thing that parents want is, can you give me a recommendation of where I can go, pick up an iPad, uh, someone I can deal with to make it nice and easy. So what we do is we've actually got a, 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 a relationship with a company called JTRS, and they actually, um, I don't know if anyone listening maybe has the GEMS Rewards app. If you go onto the GEMS Reward app, they actually have an Apple discount area on there. And from that, they will actually be able to offer parents further discount to than what you would get necessarily in other stores. And so we've actually worked with them. They are linked with um, GEMS in, in the way of that they can deal iPads with the, with the parents. Uh, and we have used them in the last two years. A number of parents have purchased iPads from them. They do have further extension programs for warranty in case there's any damages or anything. But most of our parents either go offline and they would they would pick the device that they want, maybe from Car4. But we do have um, an, an internal link that we can, of course, share that with the parents. So what we will do is I'll speak with Miss Hollingworth, the assistant principal, and we can make sure that we share that advertising with you so that then you can speak to them directly if you want to purchase a product through them. That's not saying you have to. I'm simply saying that that's one of the options because it was a request from parents over the last two years. As we come to kind of the final two slides before we open up for some questions, which we'll do our best to answer, of course, some of the most common questions that we've received for parents over the last three to five years have been these. So aren't the children too young or irresponsible for an iPad? And whilst that might be what we naturally would think, the children are actually very capable of looking after their iPads. 
Um, we've had very few incidents of where iPads have been damaged or lost within, lost within the school. And of course, the reason why we would love the children to have that opportunity is because we can see it improves and gives them that opportunity to be more independent, not just with looking after the device, but with actually managing it and then accessing all the content that we've discussed prior to this. Things like Seesaw, Zoom activities, and of course, different apps that we would use throughout the year. Another question that regularly comes up is they already have too much screen time. And you know what, I would have to agree with this point. I think we naturally, um, during the pandemic, we've had way too much screen time. I can speak for myself. I've had to recently purchase glasses because of my eyes. And that's because a lot of what we're doing right now is on screens. Of course, being year one, we will be moving a play-based approach coming up into year one from the foundation stage. So we will be having opportunities for continuous provision. We will be continuing with handwriting. We will be continuing with reading. Um, this year, due to the coronavirus, of course, we have had to adapt to that. And that has led to what myself and a number of the teachers would say has been too much screen time. And we've reflected on that. And we've made changes in our term three planning to make sure that that isn't something that was going to continue. And this will lead into term one of next academic year, because we are very mindful that whilst using technology sensibly is really important for the students, we also need to understand that there needs to be a healthy balance there. So please, once again, I, I don't want parents to get the perception that they're simply on the iPad every moment of the day. And finally, one of the questions that I've been asked by parents has been that my child will get addicted to their iPad. Um, we, we do try to, uh, we have tried to explain to the parents today that the iPad use will be at the teacher's discretion. So even when they're using the devices, we will still have elements of control within that using things like Apple Classroom. So maybe your child is really enjoys using a particular game or really enjoys using uh, watching something on YouTube. How do we make sure that that does not happen in the classroom? Well, that happens because they won't have the iPads out unless we need them to be there. And secondly, by using things like Apple Classroom, we can make sure that they're not going off task. And that's something that we've been working with our teachers with. Anything to add there? Uh, just the questions that are coming in. Uh, so some of the questions we've got is, uh, would children need to bring in the iPad daily or on allocated days? Um, Personally, I would say that you bring it in daily to be able to instill that um, routine within the students. They are aware that, same as they bring in their lunchbox and their bag, they're aware that they bring in, they bring in the iPad. It might not be used that day, but it allows that routine to come in. And it also allows the teacher to have that opportunity of, this would be a really good moment that we check out a tiger in virtual reality. It also allows those uh, Oh, impromptu. impromptu. Yeah, that's the one. Impromptu. <laughs> uh, impromptu to opportunities within uh, within ed, uh, the, our teachers to allow for those really spark moments that come in. Uh, does it have to be an iPad as we prefer on uh, Yes, we are recommended that it is iPad that will be put onto our Wi-Fi system. Um, we're just going to put the iPads onto Wi-Fi system. And this is just because of all the reasons that we stated before. Um, and to ensure consistency across the across the school, if we had mixed devices, not all Android devices are the same. And being from a facilitating point of view from a teacher, it's very difficult because I would have to understand every single device that is out there. Whereas if we have iPad for consistency, it's much easier. Uh, also for all the plethora of reasons that we said above. Yeah, yeah and the big one there, sorry, just I, I have um, from experience, we, we started with bring your own device a number of years ago. I think it was about six years ago. And um, I, I'll tell you a very quick story is there was one parent who was, he worked for Samsung, so you can guess he wasn't too happy when we had said by iPads being the better of the options. So he brought a Samsung and Samsung, if you've got a Samsung phone and you're at home right now, they're great phones, so no problem with the Samsung phone, but their tablets, for some reason, the lifespan of them is, is not so long. And quickly, this father, um, by, by, the, by December holidays, when he had purchased one in September, had needed to adapt and go for a different device. So he then went and got a Lenovo, um, a Lenovo tablet, and by the um, spring break, that was another one that had actually then also not kept up with the times to which at the end, the father had decided, I'll just get an iPad. 
And by the time he got the iPad, he had spent more money going through different devices rather than necessarily coming from the point. And we do understand that sometimes if we were to take the price of an iPad and the price of a Samsung or an equivalent iPad, there will be a discrepancy. However, the longevity is that if your child gets one of the devices that we will, of course, um, share with you the different specs that we think would be applicable for a child, this will last them all the way through to year six and even into year seven. Um, and so we can ensure that that's something that would be a long-term purchase. It's not something that you would need to necessarily be updating from, from now until at least year six. So it definitely will benefit them. And it's a tool that they will get very familiar with and will actually be able to adapt and use it as time progresses. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, the minimum model, we will make sure that we share that with you. So um, we will speak with um, the company and just for everyone, I'll, I'm gonna take my mask down. Just, it's JTRS, which stands for Just The Right Solution. And I will share with you their advertising. They've made a little leaflet and they'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to reach out to them if you would like to. And I believe they will courier the iPad to you um, if you would like that. So every morning they'll take the iPad out of the bag and keep it in their locks and tells you. Yep. Yeah, so uh, a question from a parent here has been that, will they take the iPad out? They will put the iPad into their locker and then whenever it is needed within the lesson, then they will bring the iPad out for it to be used. So that's what we would be saying to parents is that it's not always going to be used every single moment of every single day. It'll be brought out in those. Is this the first time iPads are introduced to year one? No, the, the iPads were brought into year one this academic year, as I said, from feedback from parents. Um, it's There are two main reasons. Number one was from the time during lockdown, a number of parents wanted us to upskill their students, especially in their independence with using the devices. And uh, number two was it's the most common uh, tool that students actually have at home. Um, and I'm not saying that for everyone, and I don't mean to paint everyone with the same brush because there will be some families who maybe don't have an iPad, and this will be something that they will have to, of course, sit down and have a discussion about. Um, but we, we do understand that from, from a parent's perspective. However, it is what most of the students, when we have reached out and got parental feedback, that they do actually have, um, they do have iPads at home, and so would, it would be able to use them in school. So uh, following up from that question, some of the issues that we did face were um, teacher, teacher knowledge and teacher skill, to be honest. And we've taken steps to ensure that all our staff now have digital training and work towards the Apple Teacher Program. So all staff are equipped to be able to use the iPads effectively within their education and within their teaching. So that was one of the issues that we faced. Um, Another issue, like Brian mentioned earlier, was the amount of screen time. And we've done and we've modified this in term three by moderating planning a lot more efficiently and looking at the engagement and how digital is engaged within planning and looking across the boards and not just within one subject, but across the entire curriculum and seeing how much digital is integrated within there. So those efficient changes have been made within term three as a reflection of term one and two of uh, year one having the iPads. And parents, just um, before we finish, and then we'll invite just if there are any further questions. Um, the next slide I'm going to show you actually comes from um, a, a, a trainer. His name's Mr. P I C T, and he does training for teachers. And he actually he actually used this exact slide. Now I varied it a little bit, but sometimes what the use of an iPad can look like, or when we say we're going to use iPads is we think sometimes this is what it's going to look like. And parents sometimes will go to this negative connotation of what an iPad being used like in a classroom. Please understand that what we have below is not what we would want anything to be like within a classroom. This is not what we would want an iPad used to be like at all. What we can say is that is this, if we look at these pictures, is that the fault of the iPad or is that a fault maybe more of the society that we're at right now in terms of that? One thing I would say is that the iPad is simply a tool. We only want to use that tool to enhance students' learning and to give them opportunities to be more digitally inept so that whenever they move forward with their actual skills, moving into year two, year three and year four and year five, we're not leaving our children behind. 
naturally technology is featuring into such a into a large number of our lives at the moment so we need to make sure that we're upskilling our students so that they are able to access that content but also be able to manage what is accessible use or what is sensible use when it comes to using the ipad so that's the end of the presentation parents